Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com and in this video I'm going to be showing you a cool plugin called WP Discuss. So we've all heard of Facebook comments and we've all heard of Discuss, but if you're like me, you prefer having the native WordPress comments. It feels like it belongs on your website. But have you ever wished they were just a little bit more feature rich? That's where WP Discuss comes in. It uses WordPress comments, but it enhances it to make it as they like to put it as a better comment system. So to install it, you just go ahead to the plugins, add new menu. You search for the plugin name right here. And once you do, you're going to get a nice little menu right here to get this access their settings. So the WP discuss plugin has a lot of options, which normally isn't always a good thing, but it has a lot of functionality. It's a free plugin, but it also has add-ons. And if you go to the add-ons page, there's a bunch of add-ons that you can pay for to expand it to add additional features. Some of their icons look a little, for the lack of a better word, kind of sketchy, but the dev team behind it is actually, they're very well known and their plugin has been covered in some of the larger WordPress media publications. So when you install it, you go to the settings menu and this is where you get to start configuring it. So I fresh installed on a brand new staging server, as you can see. And what are we left with? We not a whole lot, but here's some things that are interesting about this plugin. So you install it, you go to your post page, and here is what your comment system now looks like. It's got a lot more going on. You have a followers count, a thread reply count, the amount of threads, thread replies or when somebody replies to a comment. You can plus up a comment or vote it down. You can follow the user so that way you get notifications on their comments and on the responses to their comments and it gets a time and it has just a little bit of everything. But with that being said, there are some things that you should be aware of. Number one, when you enable WP Discuss, it's going to automatically turn on for the home page. Make sure that option is just disabled. You And it gives you a nice little icon here that describes what this does. And you click it and it says it is designed for single post types. There's no way to load it on archive pages. And if you want to have it on your home page, you click this option. I would never want the comments to be on the home page, but if you have an interesting setup where you want it to be, maybe you have some kind of weird community style website with comments, that is a good option for you. If you use the word, you can use native WordPress Ajax functions, but if you disable this option, you're enabling WP Discus Ajax functions. So the difference is if you're using the WP Discus functions, they're faster. They're much more efficient than using admin Ajax. However, it could lead to conflicts with other plugins. So if you're trying to go for speed, go ahead and uncheck this option and it will use their system, which is faster. But you may notice incompatibilities because certain times when developers use their own Ajax functions, it could interfere with Ajax heavy themes and other plugins. So just make sure you're testing it to avoid issues. And then make sure that you're loading the scripts in the footer. As you can see, then you have a use guest email to detect registered account. Sometimes registered users comments as a guest. Basically what this does is if you have a system in place for users to register on your website, maybe you have a uh, WooCommerce website or a BuddyPress slash BBPress website. If you enable this, it will detect if their email matches their WordPress account on your website and it will sync their profile information. So that way they're showing the correct Gravatar and it's displaying their labels correctly as you would expect them. You then have the secure comments content with the HTTPS protocol. This is what you should leave it as. It should replace non-HTTPS content to simple link URLs, or you could also set it to replace HTTP with HTTPS. I would do the second option if you're strictly going for a security point of view, because not all websites support HTTPS, believe it or not, even though I think we're up at like, what, 70 something percent now? but if you change it, sometimes users who may click a link to go to another website may get a screen saying it doesn't support it or it may cause other issues. But so if you want to maintain maximum compatibility, use this option or use the following option. But if you want to get the most secure option, enable HTTPS, which is the middle option. 
You could choose to redirect the first commenter to a page if you wish, like a thank you page or saying you were number one, or you could just choose to not redirect them. I wouldn't really bother the first commenter because then they're gonna remember if I comment first on an article, they're just going to get sent to some weird page that they probably have no interest in seeing. My general rule of thumb for UX is don't bother people if they don't wanna be bothered. Then you have the option to use the WordPress date and time format. WP Discus shows it in their own format, which is the reference point of when the comment was published, for instance. So if we change this to the WordPress.com or WordPress.org version, so as you can see, it said two hours ago, but now it says April 20th, 2020 at 12 a.m. So from a strictly user point of view, the WordPress type date and time format is just not user friendly. In fact, I'm not a fan of even setting up the correct time zone in WordPress because it's a little too obnoxious to go through a list of 500 plus time zones just to find the one that may be right for me half the year and then isn't right half the other half of the year. I, I'm not a fan of it. You can then choose to hide the header text. This, this hides the leave a reply box that you see right here. I'll show you what that looks like real quick. We're, we're gonna get into a lot of subsettings here, so I'm gonna not show you every bit of, of comments, but as you can see, it removes the text that was up here. I would personally keep it so that way it differentiates where your comments begin and your content ends. Um, but let's just uh, uncheck this. You can choose to show the logged in username and log out links on the top of the main form. If your users can log in, this can be useful. You can choose to enable comment form components so you, or hide them. You can hide the please log in to comment text. You can hide the my content and settings button and so on and so forth. It's just a great level of flexibility and customizability that you don't really get at the default comment system. However, there are so many options here that it may be a little much depending on the type of website that you're building. It really comes down to what kind of flexibility you need in your comments. You could choose to keep guest commenter credentials in the browser for an X number of days. If it sets to negative one, it will save the credentials in their browser forever until their cookies are wiped. Typically what I recommend is you save it for 30 days and then the cookie expires. There's no real reason to keep the user's credentials saved in their browser forever. It's almost obnoxious to the browser at that point, mostly just because it's non-essential information. Your website, if you're having a comment form, isn't as essential as their browser saving their username and password or as useful as the browser saving their credit card details that they may have saved in there. So just don't keep it in there for an extended period of time. There's no real reason to bother the browser with a cookie that never expires just to remember their guest name, email, and website information. You can choose to key, uh, the limit the common author name for guest. You can choose a minimum of three characters and a maximum of 50. You can increase and decrease the intervals as you like. This is just a means of also preventing spam. Sometimes commenters will only have one word usernames or sometimes they'll have a very large name. So you, this is just a good means of pretty much restricting spam and allowing them to have usernames that are useful. You don't want to have somebody just putting a period or a as their username. You can then also change the comment text length. You can have a minimum number of characters. A number of characters of one doesn't do anything. If you leave the max value empty, there will be no limit. I recommend you bump up the minimum to a good number of characters. If you're getting a comment, you don't want to just see somebody saying, hey, that's cool. And they're mostly doing it at that point to get the backlink from their username to point to their website. The caption generation type, you can choose to use a file system or WP session. And you can't really go wrong with either option. As it mentions here, invisible spam protection, you should purge the caches after each key generation. If you change this, purge your varnish cache or your WP rocket cache or whatever you're using. Choose to display a note about the invisible spam protection. This is not a very foolproof solution, this invisible system. They have an add-on for RE captcha. I would say if you're really concerned about spam, you may consider using RE captcha, even though I'm not a fan of the weight that it adds to the page. You could choose to enable quick tags. A quick tag is a quick form of 
basically HTML markup that can be added. It's an on-click button that allows tags to be bolded, for instance. So if you reload this, I'll show you what this does because it's interesting. It basically just adds little buttons. So if you say hi, you can highlight the text and B is for bold. So now it'll be bolded and it'll output as bold. I don't recommend you enable this option unless you have a very specific reason to do so. The reason I don't recommend doing that is using tags like this is a very common spam method, mostly because the link tag exists. So bots who can figure out that they have the authority to use this tag will try to link to all sorts of content and their URL, just like this comment does by default and links to Gravatar. So just keep that in mind. Underneath the comment list, you have additional customization options. You can choose the voting icons, the statistics mode, and a bunch of other details. One thing that you could do to reduce a lot of spam is to disable the profile URLs. This basically prevents the URL from being linked. So as we can see, this is linked to wordpress.org, and now it is no longer linked. It removes a bit of an incentive for the spam bot to comment on your website. One other thing that I do recommend that you check out is the comments loading and pagination type. What you should do is load the elements, lazy load the comments. The reason you lazy load comments, and I'm actually gonna be making another video on a plugin for the native WordPress comments and one for Discus and another video on Discus. I have so many videos that I have to do. But the reason you lazy load comments is because of two parts. Number one, if you have a very large and active thread, and let's say you have 100 comments, you have a very popular piece that you've written, you have a very large increase in your DOM size. By loading all that HTML on the initial load, users are then having to wait for the rest of the HTML to be parsed. If you have your JavaScript in the footer and deferred for instance, it's going to take significantly longer for the browser to parse that JS. That can stop maybe a news ticker you have or your off-screen nice drawer for your mobile menu from loading, among other things. So by lazy loading them, you reduce the initial DOM size, and then it only begins to download it once the user scrolls. But you also gain the benefit of the images, which are the Gravatars in most cases, they're not downloaded immediately. Gravatars are very useful for having an easily consistent profile across all WordPress websites, but the issues with Gravatars are is they're not cacheable by default, and a lot of users aren't using anything more than the anonymous little person, mystery person icon. And those who are, their images are still not cacheable. So you're gonna get a lot of warnings if you ever run a performance test. And sometimes those images aren't all that optimized. They're not served as WebP, even though in my opinion they should be. And sometimes the comment system serves larger images to the user than are actually necessary. So just make sure that you're lazy loading your comments, or at the very least, you're using a plugin that lazy loads Gravatars like A3 Lazy Load, or WP Rocket, or Fastest Cache Pro, any, no matter what you're using, just make sure that you're lazy loading the images to at least reduce some of the impact. You have the option for live update. Live update doesn't overload the server. What this does is, if you enable live update, if somebody comments on your post, it will, after a few seconds, upload the, update the post, update every 30 seconds on this interval. And that way, hey, somebody's commented, now it's gonna show you that new comment. And then it'll show them a new one and it will continue to show them. One of the things is if you're using a shared hosting plan, typically worse shared hosting plans, GoDaddy, Bluehost, so on and so forth, you're gonna get notices that you're probably using too many server resources because they are very, very limiting platforms. I don't recommend using this option unless you have a VPS or a very good host. You could see if some of the uh, host Keensta WP Engine may allow it. Cloudways obviously allows it because they're just a managed provider for your VPS. So just keep in mind, for most use cases, this is totally acceptable. You don't need to show live comments unless you have a very, 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 very active comment section and you'd like to keep your users engaged or maybe you're doing some sort of live video, that's the only time that I would do this. Underneath your subscription settings, you can modify which following, what's allowed to be followed and the subscription information for getting new comments. I'm not gonna to touch on this too much, it's just more customizability. The styling option allows you to change a variety of the colors on the forms so that way you can fit your website style 
and there is dark mode. Dark mode is my favorite. Dark mode, all the things. In fact, on the daily exposition, when I converted it from newspaper to JNews, I set up dark mode. There's a little slider. It converts it to dark mode. Works great. I love dark mode. The cache section allows you to enable Gravatar caching. Remember that thing I was just complaining about? There is a solution for it in this plugin. However, you're still downloading all those images onto your server. And chances are you're not optimizing those images on even a routine basis. So just keep it in mind, loading all those images and the comments is still not a good thing. But these are good default settings. Cron job, it will cache the avatars for 10 days. I would recommend setting it for 30 days. People don't really ever update their gravatars because most don't remember what a gravatar is. You have the social login and share. This will allow you to enable logins from a variety of platforms. I am not going to show you how to set these up. They have documentation for that, but it basically just allows you to allow users to comment via their Facebook profiles, Twitter profiles, so on and so forth. The integrations it basically just list out where, what plugins it supports and various bits of information such as this code for syncing BuddyPress profile URLs with WP Discus or setting up MyCred compatibility. And then the add-ons is a list of paid add-ons and that are compatible with their plugin that they are developing and they make great add-ons. That's about all I really have to say about this. It's just a great way of adding additional features to your comments section, but I'll be brutally honest. I've never found a need to expand features from my comments section because a lot of people don't comment on blogs anymore. And even if they do, a general comment section is totally fine for the average user. But if you needed something a little bit more, this plugin does its job and it has all the bases covered. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.